Everyone, welcome to Dinosaur Month. Okay, okay, so in this month, December, which is Latin for Dinosaur Month, we remember those that have returned from the dead. Dinosaurs. Several board game reviews dedicated to board games about dinosaurs. You could even go as far to say that this crazy son of finally did it. Okay, so before we get started with some of the bigger board games, uh, we're going to start with Dinosaur Island Raw and Write, which is a game in which you and your friends will be taking the role of theme park operators and designers. The theme, dinosaurs. You will be trying to stuff your park full of dinosaurs created through genetic science and all other sorts of attractions and amusements to create the most exciting and wonderful park possible and hope that no one dies in a movie-worthy incident. Whoever has the most points after running their park for three seasons is the best of parks and ultimately wins. <laughs> Whoever was the last person to burn down half a theme park goes first. Dinosaur Island is, if you haven't worked out from the pun, a roll and write game, specifically a vaguely roll and write game of <sighs> Dinosaur Island, which is a board game about creating a theme park. The theme, dinosaurs. But to simply dismiss this box as a roll and write version of this one really doesn't do the roll and write version any form of justice because this is great. In Roar and Write, you are trying to create a nifty little engine with genuinely very limited resources in your dinosaur park that will run three times and only three times in what you hope to be a build up to something magical and also hopefully where no one dies. It is a relatively simple game as each game is split into three seasons here, and each season is composed of two dice phases and one tour phase. During the dice phase, you take, you know, a handful of dice from the sack, you roll them for everyone, and then each player takes it in turns to take a dice from the center, a die from the center, mark off your resources, and gain some bits and pieces. Then, using your two dice, you take it in turns to place them down on this central board to take some actions, which can be anything from like gaining resources or buildings to, you know, making dinosaurs or something. But so far, so pretty much any board game ever. Aha! This is a roll and write, don't you know? We've only rolled. We've not even begun to write. Because gaining resources isn't as simple as just moving a slider up and down or picking up a token, it is circling your bits of DNA as you gain them, or striking off your coins as you gain them. And building buildings isn't as simple as, hooray, you've done it, here, take a token. It's, well, where the game gets a lot more interesting. This is your park, this 15 by 15 grid. And whenever you want to build a building, you need to crudely draw its shape within its parameters. There we go. And that seems really easy when you're drawing, when you're building like just one food stand. But what happens when you start, you know, building loads of dinosaurs all at once and you've got a load of paddocks and, and buildings to build, loads of food stands and merchandise stores to build all at once? Well, well, you just, you just, well, hmm. Like any great work of art, the moment you have to put pencil to paper fills you with that horrible dread and anxiety as you know deep down that where you're starting, what you're doing, will probably not be correct and you'll only realise that once you're far enough down the line and it's too late. But realistically, you just have to give it a go and go for it.
Oh, that didn't feel good. The positioning and layout of your park is important because eventually it's time to open up your park and take people on a tour. And you want all of your buildings to be connected using the most interesting resource of them all, roads. Because as you go on tour, you want to try and visit as many of your buildings for the first time ever as possible. And also hopefully eventually end on one of these exit gates to score lots and lots of points. When you run your park, a whole number of abilities all start popping off in a way that gets a little out of hand because you get your initial resources from your little basic engine, which could potentially buy something else, generate something else, which generates more resources just immediately. Then you go to your specialists. You all have their own unique actions that you can do in whatever order, which can possibly get more resources to you know, fulfill conditions for more of them or just build more dinosaurs. So you're going back to your park and drawing more bits and pieces. And then you do your little tour, which generates more excitement. And then when you gain all your excitement, re bonuses, you're just sort of bouncing around your board, trying to work out where everything goes. Then you check your security and threat to see if that's all order and see if anyone's died. And oh no, yes, once again, running a theme park filled with terrible lizards turns out to be quite dangerous and possibly a bad idea. Because you see, whenever you build a dinosaur, they generate threat, which is bad. And you need to counter that with, well, security, which is good. And if your threat ever is higher than your security, then people start to die, which is awful because well, yes, the tragic loss of life, but more importantly, you lose points at the end of the game for every person that has died, which is terrible. And if to make matters worse, if you ever hit one of these red, terrible danger spaces with all the deaths, well, the deaths have gotten out of hand and you need to start destroying things to, I guess, hide the evidence. You can possibly lose some DNA, which isn't too bad, except obviously, well, you need all that DNA to, to build dinosaurs, to make your dinosaur park, or, or maybe you want to lose some roads, but roads are really difficult to, to construct and can also just cut off a lot of things. Or even, I don't know, maybe, maybe you just lose a building, right? Except, well, when that building explodes, your general resource income is going to be less. Or, or maybe you just make an entire dinosaur paddock explode, killing all the dinosaurs. And, well, you can never build those dinosaurs ever again because they're all on fire now. You can't even just get away with building lots of pleasant herbivores and filling your park full of these nice and threatless dinosaurs. Because, well, after everyone has drafted their dice, whichever one is remaining, every single player gets not only just the resource on it, but more importantly, the threat pips that are on that remaining die, which can add up quite quickly. Then when you're all trying to take your actions from the central board by placing your die down, your dice, well, someone can put one down that is, let's say, has three threat pips on the get to security action which you want to take that action. So in order to do that, you then have to place down your die on top of it, gaining the three threat from that one as well. And oh God, was that worth it? Definitely not. And worst of all, that whatever is now face up, that's what it costs in the future. So for someone else, it could be worth, worth well, zero threat. Oh goodness. There is a mild amount of like mind games and planning involved in the dice drawing phase because you want to possibly try and get the dice with the high number of threat pips on them so that you can place them down on a, on a space to either fully block that action off from your opponent because they'll never pay that level of threat. Or if you know they really need it, then it makes it really expensive for them and that's incredibly beneficial for you. But at the same time, sometimes it turns out, well, they were never going to go on that space ever, 
and you actually really need to go on that space twice in a go. So all you've done is made it really expensive for yourself and your plans have blown up in your face like so much Dilophosaurus saliva spit. And oh God, all of your plans are wildly getting out of hand because you're generating so much threat now. Oh God. I I really like this game. It reminds me of A-level maths in a way that, and a statement that is not necessarily the coolest, but honestly, this is like a fun little maths puzzle that you're trying to plug away at. Like it's a big elaborate equation that you're working out each individual component in a way that it slowly but surely builds into something that might be an answer but also probably not and it is just i think part of that is due to the fact it's you know pencil on paper it means you're scratching away you're marking bits and pieces off you are like moving around the board and purposefully and personally engaging and striking and everything feels so much more personal because even though you're all drawing the same number of shapes when you see how different people draw them oh god it, it's it's personal and it's your own little puzzle that you're trying to solve and yeah i think it's just kind of lovely because of that there are many interesting choices to at play in this game because well you have to ask do you want like a really stable income from buying lots of food stores early on which can be useful for buying other bits and pieces or do you want to get lots of merchandise stores and just hope that every round having that random dice rolls can potentially pay off quite well because that can be a lot of like dna or a lot of free buildings if you luck out similarly when you're trying to buy your specialists you have to ask well buying the security chief seems good because that's obviously an extra free security each time you run your park but maybe the tour guide because roads can be quite difficult to get so two roads every go well that's also good but free dinosaurs because you see the arrow actions on each of these specialists well they can only happen a maximum of three times because it's each tour and there are only three tours so you're having to decide which of those arrow actions are the most valuable to you and that you you yourself can get the most value from then you have all the variants in game setup from the extra specialists and buildings in which every single player can build any of these provided they've got the money and these really shape how the game is going to play out because they provide all sorts of bonuses specific for certain conditions and can ultimately just shape your entire strategy do you want to just not build any dinosaurs at all early on and instead hire a man to just dance in front of a load of t-shirt stores and hope that that generates enough excitement to hopefully be useful well you can and that's a genuinely surprisingly legitimate strategy early on because it sometimes kind of works there is so much silliness at play here because you might think you know what why can't i just build one of every single type of dinosaur for that delicious bonus thanks to one of the buildings well you know you'll quickly realize that's because you need to try and find a space for them in your park and things begin to get a little bit of a tight squeeze so you're like well oh goodness uh maybe i'll just put the t-rex over here next to all the food stands um what, what could possibly go wrong there is something to be said about just how much of this game you're trying to store and plan in your head quite fruitlessly and it's good but it can also be a problem because you see sure you might be able to work out that well i'm going to generate four gold from here which obviously can be, i can finally use to get over this bit which will then generate something over here which means that this increases which means i get so many more bits and pieces you see it's it can be a bit weirdly circular because you're bouncing around so many bits and pieces of your your sheets it can be almost impossible realistically under the time pressure to try and work out exactly what is going to happen and sure if you wanted you could take the time to perfectly work out the exact course of action everything's going to go in and work out whether that's efficient or not 
the issue being is your friends are going to get very bored of waiting for you as you work out the exact sum and the errors that will inevitably occur are like the spice and chaos that is required to make this sort of thing fun. It can just be a little bit overwhelming at times. Early on in your first park tour, things will be, you know, quite simple and potentially underwhelming because, well, you've only marked off so many bits and pieces in terms of excitement, so not a lot actually happens, and maybe you built one too many dinosaurs early on, so, oh god, someone died, and you begin to question, am I actually good at making dinosaurs, or have I just miscalculated a lot? But by your second tour, magically, you've gained enough resources and enough buildings that, well, things start happening and you're like, oh god, I've got a little thing going on here. And then by the time you get to that final go, that final run of your engine, you've generated so many resources and so many buildings and other bits and pieces that, well, to be honest, it is wild as to how many things start popping off all at once and you're buying building after building and generating so many resources and just ratcheting up more and more points and it feels incredible as to how many of these turns each turn each run of your park feels genuinely uniquely different because of just the different amounts of resources you've generated lead to just kind of feeling really good plus for a game that is essentially all about making dinosaurs in a dinosaur theme park it is incredibly easy to make dinosaurs, which is great because it is simply just go on a space to make dinosaurs, strike off a load of DNA, and before you know it, you've made like, I don't know, four megalosauruses. Great. That's really simple and that easy. Because the puzzle's not, well, how do I make dinosaurs? It's, oh God, how do I deal with all these dinosaurs I've made? And connect everything up. Also, something I've recently realized is the final death toll count and effects only happen after everything else has been, minus like the final calculation. So you could, in a last ditch effort to get a load of points, build loads and loads of big angry carnivores, gaining lots and lots of threat. And as long as you don't mind people dying and the negative points that come from that, which is obviously the main issue, um, you only have to potentially lose like some of these buildings up here and some of your roads which aren't actually useful anymore so you could potentially create the greatest dinosaur park ever and only some of it is on fire aha i finally did it i created the greatest dinosaur park there ever is oh, um God, sir we dinosaurs. we've received reports that the um the t-rex got loose and um, is killing a lot of people and has actually destroyed most of the restaurants um, and a couple of the roller coasters. Greatest dinosaur park ever. Oh God, the dinosaurs are eating my spleen. This is the worst dinosaur park ever. Dinosaur Island, Roar and Right is honestly kind of brilliant. It sells itself as a heavier, more thinky uh, roll and write game. Instead of it just being a single sheet of paper that looks like a glorified scratch ticket um, where you're just kind of drawing numbers in a certain order because you're playing Yahtzee. Um, it is instead a game where you are trying to build and develop this incredible engine as you're making dinosaurs and working out what you're doing with your threats and handling resources all in the balance and carving your incredible dinosaur park into, well, paper. And it's just really good. Also, it's two sheets of paper, so, so there. Outside of the sheer amount that you have to try and store in your head, so you're trying to work out just what is going to play out in the next turn, slowly frying your brain, which I like, but, you know, it, it can be a bit much. It can be a little difficult to just keep on top of everything. The only other real issue I have with this game is, well, for starters, some of the dice colours kind of look very faded and it can be quite difficult to to tell what's happening because ugh. otherwise um, it is that well it's a roll and write game right which means it comes with sheets of paper that you're going to draw in your little pencil on and the box comes with a hundred what games worth of sheets which sounds like a lot of games because it is a lot of games but if you're playing four players well that's only 25 games and the game is actually 
30 to 45 minutes, it's quick and easy and you want to play more, which is good. But you are going to run out of game sheets eventually and you have to start trying to, well, work out how much you can get away with using the office printer, the expensive color office printer to print some extra sheets and hope that, well, no one really begins to notice what you're doing on company time. But yes, but yes, that is Dinosaur Island Raw and Right, or Raw N Right, should I say. It takes a lot of the silliness and lackadaisical attitude towards death that the original Dinosaur Island had, but also presents it in a lot more, like, a more difficult and a lot chewier of a puzzle, where it's, you're less necessarily, like, at the whims of random chance, and instead, at least in my opinion, you have a lot more opportunities to work around the random chance in a way that is just genuinely very good. And importantly, it is cheap. It is like £25. It is incredibly like approachable of a game. It is fun. It has dinosaurs in it. And it's just genuinely really quite good. 